Hello, welcome to Paradise. This is the official Parramatta Eels podcast. Um, we actually have a sponsor on board now for week two of the podcast, Sport Bible Australia. So thank you to Sport Bible for your support. Uh, I'm Sean Lane, a co-host with Olin Techers. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited to be back for the second week. I mean, we want to thank all you guys for your support, your comments. Um, it's been super positive, about 98%. Positive, I've got about 2% saying Olan. I've got 2% saying Olan, shut the up, but <laughs> we'll beep that part out. Um, but it was, it was, it's been a really, really positive um, vibe from everyone coming back, man. Unfortunately, Kennedy can't join us for this week. Um, she's played a massive role in Origin. She's got a few things on. We've got a Queenslander on the couch. We'll introduce him in a, in a, in a second. But um, yeah, she did a massive job. Hopefully next year, I think a lot of people were calling for that game three because there's only two games. I was a little bit confused as well. I was watching it and I thought, I was like, oh, we're going for game three here. And then Queensland were celebrating. I was like, oh. Yeah, it makes sense, doesn't it? Right? Yeah. They was doing it on, on aggregate. I don't know. But next next uh, year, hopefully, they'll do a... Bring it back, game three. They'll do a, they'll do a game three. You're off three. to uh, England. I sure? am. I am. Tomorrow, actually. So I'm, I'm gone for a couple of weeks. Well, not a couple of weeks, a week. Uh, one of my best mates' wedding. You ever been to England? I've never been to England, oh, unfortunately. Mate, we'll have yeah, to do a little... Uh, Olan Tuggers and Sean Lane trip over and you can show me around a little take the, bit. Take the camera crew, yeah, man. That'll yeah. be oh, that'll be a fun best. experience. Introduce Paris, Paris shout or yeah. Sport Bible can uh, help us out a little bit. Oh yeah, we're just, you know we're just giving you lot like, some some <laughs> some uh, some ideas for sure. But let's uh, let's introduce our guest. You want to intro him? Yeah, he's uh, new to the club this year. He's uh, fit in very well. Uh, he's um, he's been doing very well for us on the field as well and. Uh, it's going to be good to get to know him a little bit better. I actually haven't got to know him very well myself. So, That's good. Uh, yeah, I think we'll learn a few new things about Jermaine Hopgood starting now. Welcome, Jermaine. How are you, mate? Very good, very good. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, how's the body, you know, recovery? Ah, uh, yeah, getting on, getting on. Nah, no. <laughs> 24. <laughs> you're so young, mate, you're 24, young. 24, so I'm still feeling it, but... It's all right, yeah. <laughs> um, you're, you've got um, a little bit of a relationship with um, the guru. Uh, I, I see, I mean, he... He's been he's been on your for for a very long time harping on about you. How's how's that relationship formed? How's it going? Uh, yeah, I don't know. He just um, I suppose wrapped me up a little bit back when I was uh, toiling away in Reggie's. So um, sort of been on the back and rised up a bit. And yeah, seen him the other day at the game. So showed a bit of love. You brushed him the first time. What happened there? I uh, didn't even see him, to be honest. <laughs> I was just trying to get my lungs back um, coming off the field. And I wasn't worried about anything else. And then. I just happened to see the shirt and it had my name on it and looked up and it was him. So the rest is history after that. You don't really notice people when you're walking past, to be honest. Yeah. You've you got a lot of people yelling out. So I've, got, I've got a question for you guys. What about that? Um, I Something that I don't really, you know, agree with is the uh, the halftime, the halftime interviews. Mm. Well, I had to do one, um, I don't know if it was on the weekend or the week before. It's like you're, you're in game mode, aren't you? You're just... And I thought I did it right. And then uh, a few people were telling me, Jesus, mate, you catch your breath or <laughs> like you, just, your you, you, you just finished playing. So um I don't mind it. it gives, I suppose it gives people an insight of the players before. I don't what, what do you think, Lainey? It's w interesting when they ask you what do you think about the half and you're like, I'm just trying to catch my breath. I don't know what the hell just happened. Like <laughs> yeah. let me go in and like listen to the to the coach for a bit. Mm -hmm. But I've actually never had to do one at half time. Um even at full time sometimes they what do you think about the game? And you're like I'm still, I you're still debriefing, know. you're still in like match oh, mode, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, exactly right. And then you go and watch the game and you're like, something I said in that interview was completely wrong. I'm an idiot. <laughs> it helped for me. I think we were up at half time uh, against Manly or something. So all you got to say is uh, just do the same thing we did in the first half. And <laughs> 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 well, when you're, up is, when you're up is easy. I got yeah. you. And you boys just came back from, um, you know, a little... Uh, don't like to use the holiday word, but you know, you got a. Sean had a holiday. Sean nah, had a nah, nah. <laughs> Brad, if you're watching this, it wasn't a holiday, mate. Training you were out there training every single day. Train Come on, tell him what you was yeah. doing. No, nah, I was still in, I'm still in the rehab crew. I uh, wasn't back for the Dolphins game, but um, I was close to playing. So I got to go up there and support the boys. Mm -hmm. But um, I had a holiday booked for holiday mm -hmm. for, for Noosa already because we had a, a bye weekend this weekend and the boys had a few days off. So I got to go to Noosa for a few days and I trained up there. And, Enjoyed the how beautiful Queensland weather. How far by himself? So. By himself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you so the only no one, one in that crew now? It was now? just all trust. Like no one actually <laughs> saw me do anything. Okay. So yeah, we'll see how it goes on uh, against the Warriors. I reckon. How far away are you from uh, returning to full <clears throat> fitness? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. luckily we have the buy, so it gives my hamstring an extra week, and mm -hmm. I'll be back uh, ready to go for for the Warriors. That's the plan, as long as uh, nothing goes wrong in this next 
week or so, but the mm. boys, they're going really well mm -hmm. without me, mate. You, like, got were, you got a little try, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I've had a couple last yeah, couple yeah, of weeks, yeah. two for two, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. it took me 20 to get one. That's now good. I'm on a bit of a roll, so <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> no, there you go, and that's, that's amazing. And you're, you're about to become a dad for the first time. Tell us, speak to us about that. Yeah, I've um, been with my partner Aaron for almost six years now. Um, met her in the Sunshine Coast. I'm from Harvey Bay originally um, and then moved to the Sunshine Coast originally to start uh, an apprenticeship in carpentry uh, with my uncle. So I moved out of home and moved in with him and then, um, yeah, I jumped around a bit. He got cancer and I jumped around a bit with other guys and just happened to meet her and then uh, obviously moved to Penrith at 17 and then she come down like four years ago or something. How'd you meet her? Well, <laughs> come on, tell us a story. No, no, we all no, have a, we no, love no. a love story here. Uh, we're at a party and uh, just like a little house party, and um, she actually came and sat next to me. So <laughs> oh, she, she, she made the first Oh, wow, look at that. What'd oh. she say to you? What'd she say to you? Oh, I can't remember. Can't remember? Exactly. We might not be able to air it. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't think it was anything too special. Just sparked up conversation, and then, um, yeah, the rest is history. Yeah, nice. You got a little girl on the way. A uh, little girl, it? yeah. Um, September, so grand final week, or 29th September, so uh, grand final week. So hopefully uh, we can get there and uh, get two we wins saw, in one week. We saw last year Mitch uh, gave up viewing the birth of his first child to come and win the preliminary final up in North Queensland. If you get faced with the same predicament, what's happening? Oh, Aaron, that's a great Aaron, question. Aaron already knows the answer to she that question. She knows the answer, unfortunately. <laughs> you, you, you never know when you can get another grand final where you can always have little kids. So. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I'm sure you'll have more to come anyway. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. you know. So you, you mentioned that you got a background in carpentry. Yeah. Is that what you were, you know, kind of juggling when you, before you went all in on footy or is it something that's just always been there for you? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I just wasn't the best at school. Not that I was bad, uh, like a bad kid or anything. I just, um, I just couldn't really focus and I was just there to play sport and see my mates uh, really. So then uh, my uncle just offered me their apprenticeship and I was just playing local footy in Harvey Bay. Like no one gets picked up to play um, anything more than that from Harvey Bay. Um, it's pretty rare. So that footy was never really something that you thought you were going to do. It just wasn't something that happened. And um, I just moved and started working and was going to just scrap footy sort of thing. And I had a mate from Harvey Bay move to the coast as well and he just played was playing at Calandra and conned me into coming to a training session and uh, Lee De Jersey, who was my coach at the time, did a bit of scouting for Penrith and then, yeah, just played two years there and ended up uh, getting signed by Penrith. Nice. So, yeah, I was just going to go on to speak about that, that journey moving to Penrith and then how you found it going from Penrith to um, Para in terms of culture, in terms of teams, just like how have you found the transition? You've obviously played pretty well on the, on the field. Yeah, transition. I think it's been pretty seamless, I reckon. Um, two uh, very similar teams and um, groups of guys here, obviously. Uh, there's a group of guys here that uh, get along very well and that's something that a lot of people try and talk about Penrith's culture is how long they, uh, how good they all get along. And um, that's something that um, definitely they've got here. Um, <laughs> might have to bleep it out, but there's no dickhead sort of thing. <laughs> no yeah, dickhead policy sort, of, sort of thing. Um which is good, and once you know, once you get everyone buying into the same uh, goal, and once everyone wants to reach that, then it makes things a lot easier. I think it really helped you for footy too, being at Penrith, and especially under Yoey. Um, you've just been able to kind of, like you said, transition into our team where we have a similar setup in terms of you have a system and you just slot in and fulfil your role. And um, I reckon that would have helped you for sure as well. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, I think hundred um, percent. Obviously. Uh, had Yoey in front of me there or um, I wasn't really playing but just to have him to learn off and um, obviously he's one of the uh, best locks in the game but in saying that yeah um, a lot similar in the systems and everything we do here and what they do over there is within a system mm. attacking and uh, defensively as well so once you know your job um, it makes it a lot easier and you've only got to nail your job to help the team. When you were deciding to either stay at Penrith or sign elsewhere. Did you did you meet Brad and what was your impression of when you had your first chat with him? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I come in, in here and met Brad. Yeah. Uh, I think there might have been a couple of boys on the physio table, just walked around and um, had a um, chat to him. And uh, my first impression was like, I thought we would really get along. Yeah. Um, he's a straight shooter and tells you how it is. And um, I think the way I was brought up and where I come from, that's 
what I need and um, you're better off knowing when you're in the wrong or when you're doing something right as well. Um, he's always there to let you know and I think that's really helped. Oh, amazing. Um, obviously, you're, you're, you're a Queenslander and, you know, we're... We're blues. Um, how we, are. You we are. Adopted blue. Adopted blue, you know, <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can say that. You're also, wearing your Samoa jersey, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I was it's technically... Half the blue, team you know, was played Samoa anyway. Yeah, I was trying to, I was trying to support the, the, the man, them, the Samoans. But um, I was trying to, I was going to say... What was I going to say? I was, I was going to say the way the blues are, and the Queenslanders are, like, how have you, how have you found that... that um, you know, it, doesn't, it seems like from a from an outside perspective, someone that's only watched the game for however many years, two years, when they say we just don't get it, what's that? What's that mean? I'll let that Queenslander answer it first. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's like um, a bit more of a heart thing. Maybe <laughs> just playing more. Uh, what I always thought of it, or the last couple of years anyway, I just feel like. Um, because the Blues team's always so stacked and they've got um, – everyone always writes off – or the last couple of years anyway, that written off Queensland because Blues have um, big names and, and all the rest. Um, I feel like maybe those guys feel the pressure of the game a bit more uh, because they've got to live up to, to an expectation. Whereas Queensland um, – well, I know for me personally, like if I ever got the opportunity to wear that jersey, like it, it doesn't matter, you know, you just – you're just so happy to get it and go out there and, and represent it that you're not worried about the external pressure of what you probably need to do. It's more or less like you're so happy to and so grateful to get the jersey um, that I think that just runs out on the field and I don't know, I suppose they just played better as a team this series anyway. What's your most valuable lesson you've learned uh, throughout your career and advice to players trying to break through? Obviously you had a, not the conversional path to the NRL, but you still got there. Yeah, I suppose it's just staying persistent and um, the old saying, um, what is it actually now? I forget it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hard work beats talent when talent doesn't want to work hard. That's the one. Oh, um, beautiful. Gems. Thought train. Yeah, main main thought train. train. Main train. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, the I don't know. Train. I guess I think, um, yeah, I didn't, didn't definitely didn't get the easy path. Um, just had to work hard and you, you got to sacrifice things. Um, I'm sure if you spoke to anyone who's played in a row at some point, you have to sacrifice something. Um, so, yeah, kids just train hard, work hard and be a good person, I reckon. Love that. Any Lane, you could probably add to that as well. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess I had a not the most conventional path into first grade as well, you know. I, I can remember when I was younger and I used to not get picked for the junior rep teams and things like that. And when you're a young uh, player coming through in Sydney, it's just either it's make or break mm. almost in your in your mentality. And so I, I had to learn myself something similar, just stay persistent and, and keep working hard. And eventually, if, if you continue to improve gradually, then people will notice you and um, you'll get some opportunities given to you. And then I think that just builds the the necessary habits that once you do get into first grade then you'll stay there because you've learnt to be there and and train really hard and yeah like i said it also helped that i i grew like a foot yeah and what are you talking about like six foot six oh bro come on I thought you don't six tell four. me short. wait six five come on six six <laughs> six, six, six six what are you i'm uh what do you think i am i don't i'm i've really seen five, you stand up like one. yeah True. do you know what the I thing is say six foot Everyone think everyone world, actually yeah. thinks I'm short because in most of my videos I'm like just talking to the camera, but I'm actually I'm six two. Six two? Mm -hmm. Short six Not two. Not bad, eh? A short six <laughs> two. Oh, oh, oh. oh god. What do you well, tell girls? Do you tell girls? No, six no two? I say six two. Oh, okay, good, good. Because otherwise, if I've got, once Mc, they if see I got you. McQueen's on, I'm six three, but I don't wear them oh. anymore. Okay. You know the, the, the shoes with the platform on the bottom? Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I don't wear them just anymore. Just your TNs and Air Max. Just right. T, man, TNs and uh, uh, Proper Westie, <laughs> mate. You know what I mean? Adopted. Uh, nickname, you got Hop Great, Hop Goat, Hop God, Hoppy, Maney. Which one you prefer? Well, right off the first three. <laughs> <laughs> hop Goat. I love that one. Uh, no, I grew up as Maney. Yeah. I suppose Hoppy was like something that my dad or uncles were called. Yeah. Like a bit of an older nickname. And then... I uh, got Maney over at Penrith and then I got here and we had Laney, Rainey, we couldn't have Maney, so um, yeah, just went, we've just gone with Hoppy. Hoppy. Yeah, yeah. I think Hoppy's the best. Yeah. Maney doesn't sound right to me, yeah. I don't think. Yeah. I Especially like maybe because I'm Laney. Yeah, Laney's like, 
Oh, gee, he, he oh, just yeah. wouldn't like it. Yeah, lane train, lane train. And um, we've got we're going to go into our fan segment next. Uh, just questions from the fans. There was a big thing on Sport Bible about Elon Musk possibly fighting Mark Zuckerberg. I believe. Who you guys got in that in that bout in the UFC as well? Dana White putting it on, so this could be huge. Elon Musk versus Mark Zuckerberg. Well, Elon's that's a pretty big dude. Doesn't that Zuckerberg does a bit of? He does. He does. Oh, he he does dude, he's done that thing with Volk. So he's actually got a bit of a background. I, I, I'm taking the AI guy, Zuckerberg. Yeah, yeah. No, I think if he's got jujitsu background, you're probably taking him. Yeah. But I don't know. I've Elon's never, Musk. I don't know. You got Elon? Me? No, I just I don't know. Has he ever? Does he? I haven't does seen he Elon do. I couldn't imagine him in a in a fight. I couldn't imagine him in a physical altercation. Zuckerberg, yeah. I could kind of. Imagine a little bit, but you never know. Elon's very secretive. You yeah, know? maybe he's maybe he's a secret. Like, yeah, you, you never know Beast. with those guys. Um, we asked this one last week as well. Biggest pest slash most annoying on the team. There was a bit of an uproar about this one. <laughs> there was. <laughs> was it? Yeah. yeah, Reg wasn't happy with my Reg, answer. Yeah, Reg, Reg wasn't very happy with um with the boys calling him that, but because <laughs> you were saying about him pinching you or <laughs> smacking you. Yeah, and he was doing it again today in the gym. <laughs> but no, that's he, he actually stopped him. From punching me now by saying that a few times he's oh, really? going to do it today, but he's just fl- made me flinch, and then that was enough. So it's working. well, I'd still probably have to give it to Reg. Um, <laughs> he's Long. actually got a sore shoulder. He says from the <laughs> weekend, and um, I think I might have tapped his shoulder in the gym or something, and he blew it. it blew up big time. Did he had a band in his hand, tried to whack me really hard. So taste of his own medicine. <laughs> I love that. Give it back. Give him a taste of his own. Yeah, Gutho actually asked, this is actually Gutho's question. Um, no, who's your, who's your hairdresser, page. mate? Who just, <laughs> who's your hairdresser? Curious to know. Is this an inside joke? That's a good one, Gutho. Hairdresser slash butcher. Oh, is that why you got the hat on? <laughs> don't worry about the hat. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? No, I, don't, I just go see some lady, some hairdresser. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see a barber or anything. Do you like, reckon Manny's like, hairline is the, like the normal Well, okay, so my, my mum's a hairdresser and my sister's a hairdresser. Ah. My sister then went into barbering. Yeah. Then she gave it away. So there was a hairdresser two shops up from her, so I just went, oh, we'll just go to her. Oh, you're one of those guys? Just yeah. go wherever? But if I need my sister, I'll just go in the backyard and get the backyard chop. Oh. <laughs> the backyard chop. But I don't know what, what are you doing? getting at. He's getting at something completely different. Is he talking yeah, about? Yeah. Is he talking about hairlines? Is that what he's getting at? Yeah. He's would you ever get? Would, I haven't. To be fair, I'm really. I'm really. I don't think yours is terrible. Would you ever get the transplant? At 24. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I didn't know your age. Come on. Who, 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 wait, yeah. This will be a funny one for all the boys who listen to this. Who do you think has the worst hair besides Hodger? Who's got the worst on the team? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Worst I think one. I think Makatoa's is pretty. Oh, I think, <laughs> I think Maka. Maka. Yeah. I think, he doesn't strike me. So I think <laughs> Maka's. If I'm if I'm thinking of hairlines, what about worst haircut in general? Worst haircut on the team. I like Guffo's when it was short. Like to be it? honest, when it was shorter. Yeah. Like what do you think? Real short buzz cut. Yeah. With the fade. Yeah, a little bit. All right. Yeah. His haircut now is not very good. <laughs> like he's got the top. Got he's got like the top nut like here and there, isn't he? He's got like Jesus thing going on, but it, it works. Yeah, you know, it works for him. Um, yeah, would you would you ever get the transplant? <laughs> it's, it's more not not saying it in a way like well, that, but <laughs> I think in in my opinion, it's becoming. I've seen it everywhere. Like we've got to be realistic. I, don't, I think I don't think you'll see it in football players, mate, because everyone gives each other too much really? stick about. In, that in, type in of England, stuff. they're getting it like it's just you know, really nails. Like you just go and get your nails done. People yeah. are just go flying to Turkey, quick one, get it done. Mrs. Kid on the way, mate. I don't want to impress, you know. What do I got to go get that for? I just only the ears are the only thing. So if I lost my hair, my uh, got if. pretty the ears and. <laughs> let's 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 move on um who was your rugby league idol growing up uh well queensland and i was a cowboys fan when i grew up um didn't like the broncos very much even though i was closer to brisbane than townsville but um just watching the cowboys like thurston manny bowen like um those guys the way they played up there but every queensland i suppose you could probably narrow it oh you could probably narrow it down to Jonathan Thurston. Yeah. Just, not that I was a halfback or anything, but just, just the way that he played. And um, yeah, he was a bit of a freak and cried actually after the 2005 grand final when they lost to the Tigers. Did you? Yeah. Oh, man. It's in hysterics. But uh, there you go, man. 
Okay. Yeah. They got their redemption. Were you playing by the time they won? Funny story about me playing, actually. I uh, played my first game under sixes and um, told my dad straight after the game that I don't want to play this game. Really? It's too rough for me. <laughs> <laughs> Did and, you get absolutely uh, smashed or something? No, nah, like... I hardly even tackled. Everyone that runs usually scores a try. I don't <laughs> know. Maybe I just got tackled. Um, and then brushed it. And then I uh, played soccer for a year. Oh, you, was a, you played a little, uh, I mean, soccer. You played a bit of football? <sighs> played a bit of soccer, yeah. yeah. Um, nah, just the one year. Oh, and then my year. family's pretty um, ingrained, is that the word, in Harvey Bay Seagulls, which was the club that I grew up playing for. Um, pretty much all my family played there. Oh, wow. um, so it was only a matter of time before I went back. So I only lasted the year playing soccer and then I was back into it. Is there just the one team in Harvey Bay? What's the go there? Yeah, just one team. Um, throughout the years, actually. So Harvey Bay is directly across from Fraser Island. Mm. And back when my dad uh, was playing, um, they actually made a team, Fraser Island Raiders. But they didn't actually do anything on Fraser Island. They were oh. still in Harvey Bay, but um, it didn't last very long. And they scrapped it and it's always sort of just been the Seagulls. Your family always been up in Harvey Bay ever since they were? Uh, my dad's originally from Toowoomba, but my mum... I'm um, always been from Harvey Bay. Yeah, nice. She grew up there, and uh, my grandfather grew up there as well. She's that's the indigenous side of the family, is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, my great grandmother was uh, full blood Solomon Island, actually, and wow, cool. um, my great grandfather was Aboriginal. And then, oh wow! Yeah, nice. But yeah, still proud of who I am, yeah, and I've still course. got a, a lot, a bit to learn. And obviously, played All Stars at the start of the year, and that was an awesome experience for me. And Learned a lot out of that and um, still got a lot to learn as well. You're not a bad dancer too when we did our cultural oh, really? awareness day. Yeah, shaking a leg pretty well. Not today, but... Yeah, <laughs> not today on camera. <laughs> maybe maybe try your life. I can cross over. Oh, again. yeah, 100%. 5,000 to, to charity. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, mm. Last one to end off with. Who's the funniest bloke on the team and who's the smartest? Oh, wow. Well, uh, the smartest are probably Laney. Oh, he he always bangs on about this degree that he's got. So. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> I'll give it. I'll give the smartest to Laney, the funniest. Um, I don't know. The everyone's sort of pretty funny. Moses uh, Moses just seems to make me laugh. I don't know why. He's only got a laugh, and I don't know, he makes me laugh. It's pretty infectious. So, I'll give not it a to lot of people know that about Moses. He's a larrikin. Pretty funny, isn't he? Yeah, he's yeah. a larrikin. I think everyone's pretty funny. And we have a very good culture where everyone has a joke. Mm. Yeah. everyone. Uh, everyone's a bit childish too, so it probably makes it a bit more enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. For us anyways, for all yeah. kids. That's what we want. <laughs> Hop good. Hop God. Hop go. Thank you for joining us. Hop we, great. Yeah, hop great as well. Thank you for joining hop us. Great. Really appreciate it. And it's been good to get to know you a little bit better. Um, we'll stay following you along this journey, man. And I'm sure the fans appreciate you just sharing that part about yourself so we appreciate it oh, thanks for having me guys and all the best with it i don't know when you get back might be a bit of a hiatus now but yeah unfortunately all the Just best hang in there uh, fans we will get back no, eventually Kennedy will be on you'll be Kennedy you'll be you know oh yeah yeah, yeah we'll get all part. three all three of us in yeah we'll have another guest in soon yep who do you reckon should be on next who do you want to see hoppy i'd love to see red johnny yeah <laughs> Good he's been dodging him. us he'll dodge the bullet as long as he can yeah <laughs> um apparently he wants to come on now though Apparently he's still the first step and he's like, oh, I need to get in there now. Just, uh, he like, said we need to change the host and we need to get me, him and uh, a few others to host. <laughs> <maybe>. Oh, really? <laughs> All right, well, I'm fired now. Then there you go. Get, get I don't think much in. would make it to air then. Uh, that's the <laughs> thing. Nah, that's the thing. We, just, thought, we, we thought about it. scrap every episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be five minutes max. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, okay, thanks, uh, Laney. You want to close out with the thought train for this yeah. week? Have you, written, have you written something down? Haven't written anything down. Just roll with it. Like Hoppy... Once again, had nothing. Story. Had nothing. <laughs> <laughs> had had nothing worried. written once again. Hoppy comes up to me in the gym. Oh, my God, what am I going to do? So I think I went with a prediction last time, got went wrong. So I think I'm going to go with another prediction this time. It's going to be, be about our guest. Oi. Here he is. Special guest. Speaking of, speaking of the devil. Here he is. If you're, if you're oh, you just hit me with a story. If you're he just hit me with a story. <laughs> <laughs> if you're currently listening, Reg just burst in as we're recording, uh, as we're speaking about him. But I guess Can you sing to say, Reg? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. that's the, where were yeah. we? I can't remember. Um, yeah, so I was make, uh, and my new prediction, I'm going to say Jermaine Hopgood is going to play game three for Queensland. Ooh. 
Mm. I reckon they're going to give some young fellas a run. And I think Hoppy's been doing really well. Promising young Queenslander. Chuck him in, Billy. Let's go. Love that. Um, we'll, be, we'll be looking forward to that. But thank you guys for listening. Thanks to our partner, Sport Bible Australia. And make sure to like, share, comment. And we'll see you next time on the episode of Paradise. See you guys then.